Hey there, Nick Janitakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over why it's a really good idea to configure your web servers to lag to standard out instead of lagging to a specific file on disk. This is especially important if you happen to be using Docker, but even if you're not using Docker, it's a great idea to do this. We're also gonna go over the implementation details on how to do this configuration for a number of different app servers for various web frameworks. So if you're using Flask, Django, Rails, Phoenix, uh, Laravel, or some type of web framework for Go or Node, then uh, you'll be able to make these changes as well. You know, we're not gonna cover all of those on video, but typically it just involves going to the app server for that framework's documentation, taking a look on how to configure your logger for that, and then just changing it to log to standard out. It's usually one or two lines of code, really not too bad at all. Now, you might be wondering, you know, why on earth would you want to do something like this? And like, does this mean that you like won't be able to see your log files from the past? And the answer is no, you will be able to see them in the past. It's just that you won't have to like SSH into your server and then go to something like ver log, nginx access that log, and then like cat that file out to take a look. Now, depending on how you have your server set up, you know, you'll still need to SSH into your server to take a look at these logs that were written to standard out. But instead, you can leverage, uh, you know, unified tools that are, you know, your operating system might provide. So I typically deploy to Debian or Ubuntu-based distributions, and, you know, there's this concept of systemd, and one component of systemd is journald, which is uh, like a unified way to handle logs on a system. And there's this command line tool called journalctl that allows you to access your log files. So you know, you can run these really cool, cool and nice commands here to, you know, access your Nginx logs or a specific uh, container log, like very, very easily. And you can do like date filtering and, you know, you can even filter stuff with grep afterwards, like piping it if you wanted to do that. I have plenty of videos about how Unix pipes work. And uh, this is really cool. But the big benefit of doing something like that, like logging to standard out and using a unified tool to take a look at your logs is you're not limited to like one specific server. So like, let's say that you have Nginx running a web server and, you know, you have two different web servers running, server one and server two, and this is load balanced by like, you know, some load balancer, right, HTTP proxy or something from your cloud provider or whatever. If you wanted to really look at your log files for both of those web servers, you'd have to SSH into server number one and server number two, and then they're both going to have different logs because, you know, a load balancer is going to send traffic to server one for this request and then server two for that request, right? So you're going to have different logs on both servers and this is sort of kind of lame, right? It's like suddenly things get very hard to reason about, like what happens if you have five servers? Like, yeah, it's going to be a nightmare. Whereas if you log to standard out, you know, you can configure uh, those logs to go elsewhere. So like you don't need to have those logs get picked up by syslog on the local system and then have like journal D pick that up and then look at it with journal CTL. You can just have those logs maybe get thrown over to like a centralized logging server, right? Like an elk stack, like Elasticsearch, uh, Logstash, and Kibana. Or maybe you can use a third party logging service to, you know, have an aggregate of all of your logs there. And, uh, you know, that's a very powerful, powerful concept. And actually, I'm not sure if you heard about this one, but if you go to 12factor.net, you know, there's this, like, I don't even know what you want to call this thing, like a guide or a manifesto. Uh, it was written by someone who worked at Heroku, I don't know how many years ago, like back in 2014 or 15. And they really put together, like, these 12 amazing things that you can do to configure your application to make it, like, really portable and flexible and, like, uh, just easy to deploy in many different environments, right? Your development environments, maybe your production server with one server, or maybe it's a production environment where you're running uh, like a Kubernetes cluster with, you know, 40 different nodes in the cluster, right? Ideally, there's many things that should be the same in your application, uh, regardless of how you deploy it. Like you shouldn't have to go in there and make a ton of application changes to deploy your app in a number of different ways. So one of these uh, things here, because there's 12, 12 of them, is logging. And like, you know, I don't want to narrate this whole entire thing, but, you know, they're basically saying that, you know, you should log to standard out and then you have all this flexibility of dealing with your log files, however you see fit, kind of like what we talked about before. So that's really like the why on it's a really good idea to do this. And, you know, this isn't just my opinion. Of course, you know, this is an opinion in general, but, you know, a lot of folks do this and, you know, these are very reputable people and organizations. So now let's go over configuring a couple of different app servers to log to standard out. And we'll begin by taking a look at Gunicorn. So this is the source code to my build a SaaS app with Flask course, but you don't need the course to follow along. You know, if you happen to be using Flask or Django and you're using the Gunicorn web server, you know, you'll be able to use these configuration values just the same. Also, just a heads up, if you happen to be using uWSGI instead of Gunicorn, uWSGI actually logs to standard out by default. 
but GUnicorn doesn't log to anything, so you need to explicitly add this line of configuration to your GUnicorn config file. Or, you know, if you happen to be uh, configuring it on the command line, you can just pass in the flag there as well. So in their documentation, it says to log to standard out, you just make the value to be a dash. That's a pretty common convention. But in your case, you know, maybe this is set to a file path. And this really demonstrates the issue of why this is a bad idea if you happen to be using Docker. So this application is Dockerized. So if I do a Docker Compose up here, you'll notice that uh, you know containers start to fly out here in the output. And if I actually go to the website, which is now running on localhost 48,000, you know we'll take a look here at the homepage of the application that we build. And if we take a look here on the output, right? If I go back here and just reload once or twice and we take a look at the output, it's all good, right? We can see the, the web service over here, and these are the log entries for GUnicorn, right? There's the debug toolbar and some other stuff as well, and this is cool. But actually, you know, if you don't have this line at all and you just comment that out and you just restart the container here because we will need to restart GUnicorn, and uh, we take a look here at the page. Now I'll just do, well, actually, let me go back here. I'll just make a couple of like empty lines here just so we can see that there's, there's no output coming up. So, you know, if I reload this, reload this page a few times and we go back here, yeah, there's no output at all. And uh, that's just because Unicorn doesn't lie to anything. Now, if you set this to be a uh, file on disk, like, you know, verilog Unicorn access.log, and you're dealing with Docker, this becomes a real issue because, you know, when you stop your container like this, then all, all the state that was saved in that container is going to go puff, right? Disappears. So you wouldn't ever be able to see your previously uh, deployed applications logs, right? Because typically you'd probably redeploy your app and then restart the container and then you would lose all of your logs. Now you could do things like volume mount, like a specific log directory, but that's kind of like an anti-pattern. I mean, I'm not really a big fan of, of using volume mounts in production unless I really, really, really need to. And I think there might be something in the 12 factor app about this. Not specifically like Docker value mounts, but like the idea that, you know, your server should be pretty stateless, meaning, you know, they're kind of like disposable workhorses, right? It's like if you need to blow up your server and recreate a new one, you shouldn't have to really migrate a ton of data to make it work, especially for dealing with like a web server. So like, for example, if you were uploading uh, user files like avatars or something like that or blog post thumbnails or whatever, you know, it's a really good idea to upload that to something like S3 or an object store instead of having those files local on disk and then volume mount them in with Docker. But, you know, that's sort of kind of going beyond the scope of this video, but it's a general idea of just making your apps, uh, you know, more resilient and, you know, easier to be scaled, et cetera, et cetera. Because I, I would imagine, you know, if you had a file uploads on multiple servers and you're serving them from there directly, it's like suddenly in a situation where you have two different web app servers, you're going to run into a situation where, you know, that file upload only exists on server one, not two, and, you know, that's a problem. But anyways, going back to here, you know, we configure GUnicorn to like to stand it out just like that. Now let's go over how you can do this uh, with Ruby on Rails. So if you just Google for something like, you know, Ruby on Rails log to... Uh, standard out. You'll probably find some good blog post here. Let's see if this one is reasonable. Yeah, so like as of Rails 5, you know, you can support, let me make this a little bit bigger. As of Rails 5, you can uh, support logging to standard out. And if you go to like your config production.rb file, this will be in here by default, you know, based on what this guy says here or girl in his blog post. So the idea is like if you set this environment variable, Rails log to standard out, like if that's present, then we just configure the Rails logger to log to standard out. Personally, I would get rid of this if condition and just always lock the standard out. And I'd probably put that into my, uh, you know, general application uh, RB file. So it applies to all environments because why not, right? It's like, I always want to lock the standard out, not just production. You know, my development environment should be very similar to uh, production in that sense. So, I mean, that's like two examples of how you can do it. I mean, are there others as well? Like I've actually never even Googled for this before, but like, uh, like Laravel log to standard out. Let's see if there's anything interesting here. Docker friendly logging. You'll notice that probably you, you will find a lot of Docker results because this is typically associated to using Docker, even though it's a good idea not, uh, I mean, it's a good idea to do this even if you're not using Docker. But let's see if there's a, a good way to do this. Uh, you can, but not directly through Laravel as well. No, 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 no. Okay, I know nothing about Laravel very much. I mean, this is like a four year old issue. Uh, so I would imagine probably more up-to-date ways of doing this by now. Yeah, okay, so in recent versions 5.6, you can configure a lagger. All right, well, that has some down votes. What about up here? This looks pretty good. Cool, so I mean, Taylor, uh, this guy is amazing. Like, I actually watch his keynotes, even though I don't even program in Laravel. Uh, he's just 
very good developer, but it looks like this is the way to do it. So if you're using Laravel, you'd go into your config logging.php and you would do this. So like you get the idea, right? Like if you're using something different, you can just Google and like really find the solution pretty fast. And uh, I hope that really helps you out. You know, this is something that uh, I've been doing for many, many years now, and it works really nicely. Even if I'm deploying to one server, you know, typically what I do is I actually configure Docker to use log or use journal D as its logging backend. So I can look at all of my container logs uh, on my system directly when I want to just SSH in, like if I'm dealing with one server. Otherwise, you know, if I'm dealing with multiple servers, I just ship them to like a centralized server for uh, things like that. By the way, if you happen to be using Ansible, uh, I'm not trying to like plug stuff here, but if you go to GitHub, uh, nickjj slash ansible dash docker, you know, if you use this role here, then all of that journal D setup for Docker is configured by default. It's somewhere in here. Uh, you know, you can read this documentation if you'd like. It's really just configuring one thing here. Actually, it's configuring nothing because it's doing it by default. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty short video, I think, probably like around the 10 minute mark. And I actually don't run ads on my videos, so it's not like I'm trying to ramble on to get 10 minutes for ad rolls. But uh, with that said, you know, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. If you have any questions about, you know, logging to standard out, like maybe for your specific uh, app server of choice, like maybe you can't figure out how to do it, you know, I'll be happy to help in the comments below. And also let me know if you're going to do this strategy in the comments below. And uh, with that said, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.